Wormholes, particle physics, extra dimensions. Are the wonders of so-called reality really what they appear to be? Or do we exist in an elaborate hologram? Is our universe the result of random activity or the result of intelligent design? If a creator was involved, can we discover him through our perception of divine order? This is Into the Multiverse with Josh Peck. Can a Christian become possessed? This might be a question that you've had yourself. Maybe you've had discussions about it. Is there any biblical precedence to actually answer this question for real, or is it all speculative? Well, we are actually talking with a a, a prepper, but not just a a physical prepper, a spiritual prepper as well. Uh, Ray Gaino we have in studio with us. Ray, how you doing? Doing good, Josh. Thanks for having me on the show here. It's awesome. Yeah. In fact, this is the first time we've met face-to-face, isn't it? Well, actually, we met at the uh, the Watchmen. Yeah, Yeah. just just recently. But that that was the first time, but we've known each other for two, three years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and of course, my lovely, beautiful wife in studio with us today. How are I'm, you doing, honey? I'm good. Christina Peck. Yeah. Well, <laughs> People I'm sure they know, know that. me by now. <laughs> <laughs> they should, but of course, we're always getting new viewers and everything. And it's true. Uh, I do have to give a, a, a shout out to Sharon Gilbert and Joe Artis Horn for filling in for me when I was sick. Uh, they did a phenomenal job. You did a phenomenal job with Justin Fall. Thank and you. Uh, everybody seemed to enjoy those programs. That was a so, fun program. To yeah, do. yeah, and uh, I got to edit them, which was which was nice. But uh, yeah, that was it was a lot of fun. It's good to good to work at a place where we have people that are willing to you know help out when needed. <laughs> Multi talented. Yes. Yes. yes we exactly. Work in a wonderful place. So how do, mo- most people, uh, if they don't know you, they should. Uh, but it, it, most people who are familiar with you are probably familiar with uh, things that like what you'll be talking about in preparedness month at Skywatch TV. We have uh, Survive the Coming Storm, so make sure to uh, check out those programs in September. Uh, now we're a little bit before that, but uh, how does somebody who's mostly known for uh, this type of preparedness get into things like deliverance and, and spiritual preparedness? Uh, it's it's interesting because I've been having more and more readers actually contact me about, hey, Ray, you, you talk about this and you talk about that. How can you help me with this issue? Mm-hmm. And uh, it was when we were living in Panama that I actually started becoming more involved in demonology and how does demons affect the Christians and doing research on that. Because down in Central America, it's pretty weird down there. Oh, I bet. Santeria, there's some other weird uh, um, religions and, and things. It's nothing to be walking out in the woods and come across a bunch of candles and little icons and mm. a little little altar area mm-hmm. where they've performed a ceremony or something uh, on the property that we used to own. We had a house down by the river that has some very questionable symbols on it. And when Tracy was doing research on Pizzagate, she saw these symbols on our house, on the, oh, wow. on the house. Uh, we had this weird, uh, big, gigantic sea turtle that was on our property that was carved out of stone and everything. We don't know who did that, what it was for or anything. Mm. Um, but I honestly think that there we had some sort of demonic oppression or demonic stronghold on our property. And come to find out when I was talking to some of our other Christian friends who lived about 30 minutes away from that, say, oh, don't you know that where you live is where all the witches hang out and where <laughs> all the witches live? And, and uh, I was like, no. <laughs> so... It, it, out of all this necessity, kind of trying to figure out what's going on with my property and why are we having all these weird things happen. We had uh, an invasion of rats. We had an invasion of poisonous snakes. Mm. We've had, I mean, just weird stuff yeah. that you just can't explain. And I just, we, we started as like, okay, it's not this, it's not this, it's not this. And so is it possibly demonic? Mm-hmm. And that's what we finally came down to is that it's demonic. So I have been doing a lot of research on this. And I wrote several articles back when I was in Panama, and it just, emails started flooding in from people. Yeah. But the biggest question that people was asking is, can they be demon-possessed? Can a Christian be Mm demon-possessed? And there's people out there that believe that they can because they use the word possession as a umbrella word where, where Christians cannot be possessed. Why? Because in John, we read about how, G- how God holds us in his hand, and he says right there, no one can snatch him mm-hmm. out of the hand. Right. I like to, to, to do this and say, okay. folks, me, M-E. Now, that's got me. Let's just say this is God's hand, that's me. Okay, I can't 
be falling out of my hand. Mm -hmm. I can't, you know, I, me, can't leave the hand. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, I can, you know, experience uh, 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 and all this <laughs> other stuff and everything, but I'm still in God's right. hand no matter right. what. Right. God is not going to let me go. Right. Mm -hmm. And that is scriptural. This is, this, is, this is a very simplistic form of the doctrine of eternal security. Sure. And, and so God owns us. He possesses us. Mm -hmm. And so if he has possessed us, nothing else can possess us. Possess us. That's an yeah. interesting way to look at what demon uh, possession actually is, because the demon doesn't only inhabit somebody, you know, yeah. who's that demon possesses, possesses that person, them. owns yeah. that person, owns that person. Right. Exactly. Wow. That's that that that's really eye opening. <laughs> yeah. So a demon cannot possess us, but a demon can oppress, depress, and influence. Mm -hmm. And in fact, probably ninety percent of, of a born again born again Christian sin is based on on the demonics in one way or sure. another. We as Christians, we are free of sin, but when we sin, we actually choose to do mm -hmm. it. The flesh is weak, the spirit is strong. Mm -hmm. and, and so at times we have these little demons, you know, hey, right, you know, and, and we listen to it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we then sin. Uh, but if we didn't have the demons, you know, messing with us too much or anything, then we would sin less. And right. one of the ways that you can prevent that is, is to be in the word of God you know, the more that you read the Word of God, it charges your spiritual batteries. I, mm -hmm. I, you're a geek. I, sure. I look at it as, you know, <laughs> you're reinforcing your force field yeah. by reading the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And the more we're read up, the more we're prayed up, the more mm -hmm. we're thinking about God and everything, the stronger our force field is. Mm -hmm. So they can't shoot their little, you know, fiery darts at us or tempt us and everything. Right. We're stronger against temptation. Whereas if we're not in fellowship with the Lord, when we're not reading the word, when we're not in prayer that much, all of a sudden our force field becomes weak mm. and, and they then are able to start attacking us. And then we do start listening to those little, little voices say, Hey, go do this. Hey, this sounds fun. Hey, mm -hmm. this, you know, and, and demons are able to attack us and everything when we're at our weaker state in our Christian walk. Whereas if we remain strong in the Lord and, and, and all that, then it's pretty hard for them to, to affect us. Will they? Yes, they still can. Yeah. But it's, their, it's our choice of, of that happening to us. Hmm. Yeah. That's really interesting. I, I, I know you came up with a, a few questions too before the show. Of course, yeah. So. Yeah, uh, one of the questions, I know there's uh, obvious activities that one can participate in to become oppressed. What are some others that we might not know about or we don't see as being an activity to become oppressed or mm -hmm. depressed. Biggest influence is TV, mm. believe it or not. Uh, well, yeah, believe it. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> <That> makes <laughs> there is sense. so many TV shows right now that deal with the occult or deal with evil or deal with, um, I mean, I have to admit, I watch them too. Oh, sure. I, I watch The Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. We do you too. Know, we do it's, too. <laughs> it, but what this does is it, 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 it attacks the force field. Mm -hmm. And, and there's times that when I'm doing my research and everything, I can feel the enemy on me. Right. And, I, I, think, I think a lot of it depends on the, the, the type of uh, perception you have or mm -hmm. your outlook on it. You know, a lot yeah. of times when we watch that stuff, we'll do it for research purposes yeah. or yeah. we'll see, you know, what, what, is, what is the enemy doing in the world and how is he twisting yeah. God's yeah. story in yeah. this yeah. movie or show? So we, we look at it a lot like that. But yeah, there are, there are times that, uh, you know, we, we even have to be careful too because mm -hmm. of uh, exactly what you're saying. Well, it's, it's interesting because again, talking Walking Dead here, mm -hmm. I enjoy the show, but it's sure. gotten to a point where... I'm so prayed up, I, and I don't want to sound holier than thou or anything right. like that, but there's times I watch it and I don't like it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's troubling my spirit. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's when I turn it off and everything, and, and to be honest, I haven't watched it in a while now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but TV has so many shows on the occult, on witchcraft, on magic. I mean, it's amazing to me the cartoons kids watch nowadays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the occult is so occult-driven. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, I mean, everything, a lot of people are, love these true crime shows and everything. Mm -hmm. That is really addictive. That is really, you know, so anything dealing with death, evil, bad stuff, that right. TV will open up those, those portals. And what it does is the eyes are to the, the, are, are, are the, the gateway to the soul. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and so you're letting all this stuff in, garbage in, garbage out. Right. And, and eventually what you do is you start weakening that force field and you start enabling 
demonic oppression. Other things that happen, you know, some of these video games, they're, mm -hmm. they're pretty, pretty bloody video games. Mm -hmm. um, things like Ouija boards, which you know, right. Ouija boards, other occultic things. Um, I mean, letting your kids buy Harry Potter magic wands, mm -hmm. right. not good. Um, mm -hmm. Some of these other other toys or other these collectibles, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of people like these collectibles that are very occult driven and, and so forth. These become portals. Another thing that is happening too is you'll go to a garage sale and pick something up that you may like, but it may have may be used as a portal for the demonic. You right. don't know where this item comes from. You don't know what happened to that. Maybe this was bought by this person who bought it from this person who was murdered mm -hmm. or was a Satanist or was something. But can demons inhabit inanimate objects? Yes, they can. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. And they can then be entered into your home that way. Um, uh, masks. Uh, we were, we were, I was talking to a friend of mine, and they had to get rid of a mask because it they felt that this was where the demon was. You're talking about like a Halloween mask or like, like, a, a, like it, an African it was, tribal it was African kind of African tribe mask. Oh, right, okay. Yes. And so they finally had to get rid of that. Mm -hmm. um, just all, but you, you know, these are things, ways that, that the enemy does gain access to, to your, a big, big, big one. And I'm leaving this one to the last is internet porn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Porn is huge. Mm -hmm. And then uh, couple that with drugs. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, what you're doing is these things cause you to uh, open up your consciousness, open up your your so that they have a gateway to your mind. And so they're not possessing you. And there's oh, they're possessing your mind. No, they are. They're they're influencing you. Mm -hmm. They they don't have possession of your body or anything. Right. They can influence you. But they, but when you open up doors to them. They're going to go through and say, oh, hey, let's, let's tweak with Christine here, kink, 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 right. kink, kink, and uh, mess, with her, mess with her mind. Let's, mm -hmm. let's start using her mind against her. Let's start entering her dreams. Let's start, mm -hmm. you know, doing things like that. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times Christians, especially in today's world, we don't know how that we are allowing these, these demons in, these right. spirits. Um, we have no idea. And one of the main reasons is because the church isn't talking about it. That's yeah, that's true. very true. Yeah, yeah. I, I do have to ask. I, I, I'm going to have to bring it up. Before you do, okay. before you do, we got to go to a break. Okay. And I hope that was enough of a tease for you at home to stick with us through the break. Christina has a very important question. And, and also, uh, what, what if you're experiencing this at home? Or, or, or what if things are happening and you don't really know the cause? How, how can you get a handle on this? Uh, well, we're going to ask Ray those questions when we come back right after this. In 2006, one month from the day Mark Taylor retired from his post as a career firefighter, he was suddenly overcome by a Holy Spirit-guided supernatural vision of the future. This revelation, as the world would soon discover, was a message to the most powerful nation on earth. The Spirit of God says, I have chosen this man, Donald Trump, for such a time as this. It's time to embrace our glorious American destiny. Anything we can dream for our country, we can achieve for our country. America will once again stand hand in hand with Israel and the two shall be as one. I want the Israeli people to know that the United States stands with Israel. The dollar will be the strongest it has ever been in history of the United States and will once again be the currency by which all others are judged. The economy is booming under this president. We're up 254 points, 21,000 on the Dow. They will say things about this man, the enemy, but it will not affect him. Well, he's kind of a comic book figure. I mean, he's a show off. He's a sideshow who threatens to swallow the Republican Party. He was attacked by other people who were running with him. His poll numbers would go up, theirs would go down, even to the point where they got kicked out of the race. He would not be the commander in chief we need to keep our country safe. Donald, adults learn not to interrupt you. Yeah, yeah. We are suspending our campaign. I am suspending my campaign. This next election will be a clean sweep for the man that I have chosen. Donald Trump will never be elected president of the United States. It still looks like Hillary's the next president. On election day 2016, the world witnessed the impossible when in the final hour, the map turned red. Donald J. Trump is the president of the United States. Donald Trump is going to be our president. 
Well, my crystal ball has been shattered into atoms here because I predicted the exact opposite of what happened. But the election of 2016 was only the beginning. Mark Taylor, author of the Trump prophecies that foretold Donald Trump's unlikely victory and the stock market reaction that would follow, has something new to say about what is coming next. Something that will change the future of America and the world forever. There's a bigger picture that the church is not seeing right now. The Trump Prophecies, the astonishing true story of the man who saw tomorrow and what he says is coming next. Coming this 4th of July from Defender Publishing. Unprecedented spiritual encounters are breaking out all around the world. Prophetic words of foreknowledge, angelic intervention, healing and miracles point to something big about to sweep the globe. Now, for the first time ever, Skywatch TV is proud to present the Supernatural Awakenings Three Works Collection. In this incredible, must-have compilation, you'll receive the Trump Prophecies. Walk with authors Mark Taylor and Mary Colbert through the astonishing biographical journey of Mark's life as a third generation firefighter, where a Holy Spirit guided prophecy in 2011 foretold Donald Trump's unlikely presidential victory. But now, for the first time ever, the world will learn how that incredible win was only part of the electrifying revelation that Mark says will certainly unfold in the months ahead. Now you can be amongst the first to understand what is coming next. Also included in this groundbreaking collection, Angels on Assignment Again. You'll be amazed as best-selling author and prophecy expert Jennifer LeClaire chronicles the presence of modern-day angelic activity, the awe-inspiring and sometimes fearsome encounters these majestic beings create. But why is their presence suddenly increasing around the world? Jennifer LeClaire's expertise will leave you exhilarated and convinced something big is about to unfold. Finally, you'll also receive in this limited time special offer, best-selling author Reverend Donna Howell's brand new release, Radicals. This cutting edge masterpiece examines how James, the half brother of Jesus, exposed the sins of the church in his day to give life to the liberating power of the gospel. Using that inspired text as a catalyst for truth seekers everywhere, Radicals examines how post-denominational Christians today can also avoid mistakes and become infused now with supernatural power. Get all three new releases at the discount price of only $29.95 plus shipping and handling while supplies last. The Supernatural Awakenings Three Works Collection will only be available in this unprecedented offer for a very limited time. So make sure to place your order now at the Skywatch TV store. Welcome back to End of the Multiverse. Uh, I want to get right back to it. Christina, you had an important question I and did. I interrupted you. Yes, you did. <laughs> well, I uh, would like to bring this up a little. You're talking about the internet pornography and everything. If somebody is, in, is addicted to internet por mm -hmm. pornography, mm -hmm. can that addiction lead to incubus and succubus mm -hmm. spirits being yeah. welcomed into the home. Yes, uh, that is, and in fact, it's amazing. I, I did write several, I have a, a series of articles written right now that I'm gonna be turning into a book, but the series is called Days of Noah, The Demonic Wars. Okay, And where can pe people find people that? People can that find that at raygano.com. Great. And do a search on that, or just do a search on demons, all my articles will pop up, but right now I'm having them featured because it's a series that I've just recently written, but, uh, Yes, that is, it's, what is amazing is that more and more Christians are being affected by incubus and succubus demons. Incubus and succubus demons are, uh, an incubus is a male demon mm -hmm. that will attach itself to a female mm -hmm. and coerce it and um, tease or, uh, what are words that I can use? <laughs> <laughs> Basically seduce a right. woman. Uh, spiritually, mm -hmm. and and demons do have the the power to to influence and touch. They they actually have the ability to to enter the body via uh, molecular manipulation, mm -hmm. and so they are able to to sexually arouse, sexually influence, sexually um, both men and women. Mm -hmm. But uh, it will if you're addicted to porn and everything like that. 
addiction to porn is one of those mm -hmm. keys that you have an incubus or a succubus. Right. Um, for for women, uh, reading a lot of these books out there. Like They're romance, romance like the, books and the stuff. The really sexualized. And, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. That mm -hmm. is that is how women. And so the the demon will feed the woman these thoughts in her brain. Oh wow, think of this. Oh wow, think of that. Mm -hmm. uh, men, it's you, I find a lot of men being tempted or or haunted actually via their his dreams. Mm -hmm. And and so having a lot of sexual dreams and so forth and so on. Uh, these are points that you may have an incubus or succubus. Mm -hmm. uh, women also have dreams and stuff, but women tend to have more mental things being told to them where men have more things visual mm -hmm. in dreams and, and thoughts and stuff happen to them. Um, but it is something that Christians are having to deal with in a big way. It's a, it's, internet porn has opened these doors massively. And again, I, you wouldn't believe how many emails I, I've gotten just from people talking about this. Oh, sure. We, we get a lot of them, too, because we've done a couple shows now on, uh, actually, we just did one a few weeks ago on demonic oppression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did one before that called Demonic Manifestations, because we, we had actual manifestations at one yes. point in our, yeah. in our lives that we had to deal with. And yeah, we get overwhel an overwhelming amount of response because, mm -hmm. like you said, the church isn't talking about it and people mm -hmm. don't know what to do. Well, also is people are afraid to talk about it. Right. Mm -hmm. There's, oh, I'm crazy. And it's like, no. Mm -hmm. Or because the church is not talking about it, people don't even know they have oppression, depression, or being influenced demonically because right. they haven't even been taught the symptoms or the signs or, or anything like that. What are some of those? What, what are some of the symptoms that people might not recognize as being demonic uh, in, in nature? Well, again, are, do you find yourself uh, sinning or being pulled to a certain uh, realm of sin? Uh, since we're maybe talking about sexual sin, right? They're they're constantly being pulled at that, mm -hmm. and and you know they have that desire to to go look at porn, or um, they're they're dreaming a lot about it, or they're thinking a lot about it, mm -hmm. or or so forth and so on. These are things where you're act that isn't just your brain. That is right. a demon actually influencing you to mm -hmm. think and ponder on these things. Mm -hmm. And the best way to fight against that is the scripture. Mm -hmm. Jesus, when he was in the wilderness, how did he fight Satan? With the word of God. Mm -hmm. That's he, right. did, he didn't come back and, and use his own words or his own stuff or his own ideas. He quoted the word of God every single time. Mm -hmm. And and the the I wrote an article and it, and it talks about how to fight your personal demons. Mm -hmm. And there's a three three step way of fighting demons. Resist the, the devil and he will flee. That's mm -hmm. in James. Uh, and then what we do is we resist, we flee sin, and then we ask God to lead us not into temptation. Mm -hmm. Help us not to be tempted. Uh, resisting the devil, example, pretty woman at Walmart. You know, first look is okay. Second look, you have consequences. Right. And so what you do is you avert your eyes. I'm resisting the devil. Mm -hmm. um, fleeing the devil. You pretty woman, still then, you're having a hard time resisting. Flee. Get up. Walk to the other side of the store. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Avoid it. Flee. And then finally, ask God to not lead you into temptation. During, in your morning prayers or something, dear God, please lead, don't lead me into temptation. Help me not to be tempted. Do not let me come to, into evil. And, and it's amazing to me, the days that I have prayed that prayer, my days seem to go a little bit easier. Where mm -hmm. days that I forget to ask God that, mm -hmm. I'm dealing with the enemy. Wow. Mm -hmm. And and then it's it's learning to wear the armor of God. I'm I'm writing a book right now called The Servant Warrior. Mm -hmm. And I in this book I'm teaching people how to to fight physically but also how to fight spiritually. And a lot of that has to do with wearing the armor of God mm -hmm. and wearing it daily and wearing it effectively and knowing what you're doing. So it isn't just oh, I'm throwing on the armor of God. Uh, no, <laughs> it's it's learning how to battle. Right. And battle tactics are something that you have to practice all the time. You have to practice to resist. You have to practice to flee. You have to practice asking God you know, to not lead you in temptation. So these are things that you have to think about. And once after a while you start thinking about it, you're good to go. Like making it part of your daily routine and then it gets uh, ingrained in, exactly. in, your, in, in your life. Exactly. So why do you think that the church is not talking more about this? It's a topic that they're afraid of. Mm -hmm. It's a topic that is not being taught in seminaries. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it's also a lot of people don't, believe it or not, 
I believe, what, 20% of pastors today do not believe in the devil. Wow. wow. I mean, they shame. think it's fairy tale. Mm-hmm. And, and so that gets trickled down to, to the, per, you know, the, the churchgoer and everything. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people don't even believe in the devil. So that's one of the reasons you're not hearing about it. It's not being taught. It's not, there's no books on it mm-hmm. or anything like that. It's just, it's one of these things. And then, you know, we have to realize that who we're dealing with is the enemy. Mm-hmm. He's done a good job of making himself uh, a good old boy. Look at, there's a <laughs> show right now called Lucifer. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, this is just poor old Lucifer. He's yeah. now a bar owner, but you know what? He helps solve crimes time to time too. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> I know it's crazy. I mean, you'd think it'd have to be a joke, but it, 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 it's not. And you know, I think that, I, I, I think a big part of it too is there's a silent demand. You know, I do believe that there's a demand for this stuff. I believe that Christians want to know about it and they, they should know about it, but it's a silent demand. They're not asking their pastors because maybe if they do, they would have to admit that they're addicted to internet porn or yeah. something. Well, folks, I mean, talking to you right now, what you need to understand is that we're living in the days of Noah right now. We are living in the last days of the last days. We know that demonic oppression, depression, and so forth will be on the rise and is growing. We're seeing this daily. We're seeing the, the, the demonic just grab more and more to the point. I mean, just look at our nation. Our yeah. nation is divided. Mm-hmm. And this is not, you know, just some, you know, left and right thing. Mm-hmm. You're seeing people carrying signs out there. I've got it on my website. Hail Satan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is, I mean, they, the, some protesters went into some uh, city meeting one time and they're screaming, Hail Satan. Mm-hmm. Pretty blatant. Pretty blatant, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so these are things that are happening. We are living in the last days of the last days. And, and, and they, they need to understand that this is, this is happening to them. Mm-hmm. And in our busy, busy day, a lot of times we just fluff it off. Oh, this is just work. Oh, this is just this. Oh, mm-hmm. this is just that. No, we are, we are being demonically attacked in these last days, especially if we're Christians, mm-hmm. especially if we're really doing something for the Lord. Mm-hmm. Amen. And our, yes. our only hope is in Jesus through all of that. Right. Well, Ray, I can't thank you enough for coming on and talking to us about this. We'll have to have you back. Uh, if people are interested to find out more about you and your work, where can they go? Uh, simple, raygano.com. In fact, just Google me. Mm-hmm. I'm on YouTube, youtube.com slash raygano. It's raygano.com. I'm on Patreon, patreon.com slash Ray Gano. I'm everywhere slash Ray Gano. <laughs> awesome. But uh, you can go read my demonic series, demonic articles. And folks, if you have questions, if you have needs, or if you need to talk to somebody, email me. I will answer you. I will help. Oh, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much again, Ray. That uh, I'm glad that we talked about this. It's always an important topic and one I know you at home have had a lot of questions about because you email us as well. And thank you for that. Well, for Christina Peck and Ray Gano, uh, I am your host, Josh Peck. And thank you for joining us once again into the multiverse. Take care and God bless.